Watch what happens here. We get some instant feedback. So now we're ready to tighten everything down and the cover will just pop off like so. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X unlocked desktop processor. If you're interested in the CPU or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Retail box and packaging is nice and compact. Take note, there is no cooler included. This processor consists of six cores, 12 threads, and a max boost speed of 5.3 gigahertz with our base speed coming in at 4.7 gigahertz. Now let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature right here, followed by the CPU itself with our AMD Ryzen sticker. There's the Ryzen 5 7600X. Now let's go ahead, let's get it installed. So the motherboard we're gonna be using today is from MSI. This is the MSI MPG B650 Carbon Wi-Fi motherboard. The most important thing with your motherboard is to make sure it has the correct socket. We're looking for the socket AM5. You will need to use your AM5 socket. Pay attention on the cover. You should have a little triangle in the top left-hand corner. That's gonna indicate how we're gonna line up our CPU. So let's open this up. We're gonna remove the cover. On the inside, if you can see right down there, we have the same triangle. Be careful, you don't wanna to touch any of the pins or anything. So let's open this up. We'll grab our CPU out of here, being careful not to drop it or anything. Take a look at that. There it is, she's beautiful, our Ryzen 5. We'll look at it from the back side as well too. So no more bent pins on the CPU, but now you can just bend the pins in your motherboard socket. So. Line it up, triangle to triangle. We got the golden triangle here up in the corner. Looks like we got a little circle indicator as well, but use the golden triangle to triangle. Just gently set it in place. We still have the cover on, that's okay. Watch what happens here. We get some instant feedback. So now we're ready to tighten everything down and the cover will just pop off like so. Super satisfying, and now we have successfully installed our AMD Ryzen 5 7600X CPU. If for some reason you need to remove or replace it, just repeat those steps in reverse order, and there we go, now we can just take our CPU out. All right, our PC's built. We're using the awesome height Y40 case. Let's take a quick peek on the inside to see how everything came together. So peeking in the height Y40 case right here, we have our Cooler Master Master Liquid PL240 Flux for our AIO. We're rocking the MSI 3070 Ti for our GPU. The motherboard is the beautiful MSI B650 Carbon Wi-Fi motherboard. Tucked under there is our AMD 7600X. PCs build, CPUs installed. First up, we're looking at CPU Z right here. Feel free to pause the screen at any time so you can check out each individual tab to learn more about the CPU. So there's all of our specs. Motherboard, there's the MSI board that we're using. Memory, 32 gigs of DDR5. Here's your SPD tab. Graphics. 3070 Ti, and then we have our bench results. Let's dive into these scores in a little bit more detail and see how it stacks up against the competition. So our single threat score was 763. I'm really impressed with that score when you consider the competition right here. So Intel's 13th gen CPUs, the 13900 and the 13700 take the top two spots, but we're really close to the competition here. So we're beating out the 12700, we come in at the same score as the 12600KF, right below the 12600K and 12700. And we're very close to the 7950X from AMD. So definitely in that top 10 range for our single thread score. Multi-thread score, we're at the top. You can see their test results with the 7600X. We perform a little bit lower here but we're still outpacing the 12600, which is our competition. 12500, 12400, 5600X. So pretty substantial improvement there. 5600, 11600. So you get the idea. Basically the 11th and 12th gen from Intel using their 600 series, we outpace them and we beat the 5600X, which is the successor to this CPU by 
pretty nice leap and jump up in performance. And again, that's based off of 12 threads. Next, let's talk about Cinebench R23. So we got a single core score of 1960. We're coming in at number three on their rankings right here below the 13900K and the 13600K. Let's jump to our multi-core score and you'll see that we drop further down here. But hey, look at that. We're right next to the same CPU. They got a very similar score. We slightly edged them out in the scoreboard. We got a multi-core score of 1478.3. So we're below an older Threadripper, the 1950X. We're below the 13600K Intel Xeon processor, another Threadripper in the 13900Ks up at the top. And we have one of my favorite CPUs from AMD. I love the 5600G. We outpace that one. That one has a score of 1051 and one. So more of the middle of the pack for the multi-core score. Now let's take a look at our Geekbench 5 results. So we have a single core score of 2083 and a multi-core score of 11043. Let's see how that stacks up with the competition. Single core scoreboard is showing that the 7600X places in the top 10 at 2813. Again, we got a score of 2080. So I'm not sure why we have such a large discrepancy from the test that we ran and the one that's being shown here, but we'll go with their data and it falls right in line as you would expect below the 7900X. This uh, CPU is going to be neck and neck with the 13700 depending on the variation that you have and everything falls right below the 7950X from AMD as well as the 13900 CPUs. And then in multi-core up at the top again no surprise 13900 followed by the 7950X. We have to move a little bit further down in the scoreboard and you'll see the Ryzen 5 7600X here coming in at 12741 competing right with the 5950X and the 12700KF, notching out the 13500, the 5900X, 13600, 12600K, so right within that range. Now let's talk about the CPU and its temps. So currently with our build and configuration, max and stressed out under Cinebench R23, we've peaked at a temperature of 93 degrees Celsius. From my understanding online, the CPU is made to cap out at 95 degrees Celsius, not crap out, <laughs> cap out. So I thought for sure we'd be able to hit that, but we have not. So that's a testament, I believe to our AIO and our case airflow, all that good stuff. But I thought for sure we'd be able to hit 95. We're at 93, maybe it's possible. So if you're seeing anything with similar results, I don't believe you can get past 95. I believe that's gonna be the max cap for you right there. But so far, so good, not having any issues, not throttling or slowing down at 93. I know there's red on the screen. You don't have to be worried about it. Again, this is designed and engineered and made so we can go up to 95. Your results will vary again, depending on your setup. So let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the AMD 7600X. I feel like this CPU hits the sweet spot for most people out there doing any entry level or mid range PC building and you want to use AMD, this is gonna be the CPU for you most likely. Price to performance is top notch. If you really need that extra bit of performance, you got the 7700X and the 7950X, but you'll definitely pay a premium for those CPUs. Nothing wrong with them, but I would say again, entry level mid range, this is gonna be a great CPU. And you can always with the AM5 platform, upgrade to one of those down the line if for some reason you're not happy with the performance or maybe you really want to tackle 4K gaming, things along those lines. But single threaded tasks and applications, hands down, you'll love the performance with this. Multi-threaded, that's where you might, again, want to jump up to a different CPU, again, depending on your use case and scenario. But for casual gamers, streamers, content creators out there, again, budget, mid-range for your build, you wanna do AMD, this is gonna be a top choice for you. And I also wanna add, I like the AM5 architecture that we have here. I didn't have to swap out any brackets or anything with my cooler. That's a couple of years old. Again, it's got the AM4 setup, but for the AM5, it just mounted right away to our motherboard without any issues. So that was a nice added bonus for us as well. It makes the pain of upgrading and changing formats and systems that much more bearable when simple things like that just work and you don't need any new brackets or anything else. <clears throat> Intel. 